In this video, we're going to talk about a new operation that's applied to vectors called the dot product. Now, this uh, particular operation will be brand new to you because, when, like earlier, when we talked about like addition and subtraction, we've already done addition and subtraction for numerical values for many, many years. So it was an easy extension to translate that to adding and subtracting vectors. The same thing with scalar multiplication. Um, but here, dot product only makes sense when you're talking about vectors. There's no way to take the dot product of two and nine or some, you know, or numerical values like that. So this is an operation that's unique to only vectors. So here's how it works. Um, let's say vector u is the vector u1 comma u2 and vector v is v1 comma v2. To take their dot product, what you're gonna do is multiply the ith components and the jth components, get those products, and then add the result together. So u dot v will be u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. Now we have a, a lot to talk about, like what does that mean? Like what does that give you? Um, uh, you know, look through an example and, and some of those other sorts of things. But, but for now, let's just focus on the algebra. Um, one thing I'll make you aware of right off the bat, uh, take a look. This answer is not a vector. That's very odd because most operations are what we call closed, meaning if you take, a, uh, let's say, an integer and another integer and you add them, your answer is an integer. Well, here, that's not the case. You have a vector dotted with a vector but your answer is a scalar. So it's, it's very, very unusual. And like I said, we'll talk about what this number means uh, com coming up in a little bit. Um, another thing that might be a little confusing, this dot looks the same as like multiplication. Um, there's not a traditional way in, in the you know, sense of the word multiplication to multiply two vectors. We have scalar multiplication, but you can't really take vector u times vector v. That, that operation doesn't make sense. The closest we have is this thing called a, a dot product. Okay, um, Let me give you a quick alternate definition. Um, this one turns out to be pretty important as well. Um, here's another way to get a dot product other than the definition I just gave you. Uh, let's say you have a vector u. And then let's say you have a vector v. Well, there's going to be an angle between these two guys, as you can tell. It might be a small angle or a wide angle or something like that. Let's call that angle theta between these two guys. Um, an alternate definition for u dot v is going to be the norm of u or the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle that's between them. Okay, I, if I were you, I would probably jot that one down on a note card and commit that to memory. And I would also jot this formula down on a note card as well because that's, that's an important one as well. And we, we use both in, in different situations. All right, um, let, let me do a quick example for you just to show you how a dot product actually plays out. So here I've defined vector u as nine comma six and vector v is negative four comma six. So if you want their, uh, their dot product, u dot v, for this one, notice I was not given the angle between them. So I'm going to use the first definition since they just told me vector u and told me vector v. I'm going to take 9 times negative 4. Yeah, I'll, I'll write this out for your notes. 9 times negative 4 plus 6 times 6. So that would be negative 36 plus positive 36. So for this particular example, our answer is zero. For another example, it may not be zero, but for this, this one, it is zero, all right? Um, now, I picked this example on purpose because I actually wanted to point something out. Uh, what you're probably starting to ask yourself is, okay, Devin, I, that's fine. I understand the definition, but what, what on earth does this number tell you exactly? Well, let, let, me, let me graph these two vectors very, very quickly, and I'm just going to do a rough sketch. Uh, 9, 6 is this guy's terminal point, and negative 4, 6 is this guy's terminal point. Look at these two vectors here. Do you notice anything peculiar about these two? What jumps out to me is it looks like these guys meet at a 90 degree angle. 
And it turns out, it turns out that if you ever take the dot product of any two vectors and you get zero, that means that these two guys here are orthogonal to one another. Uh, orthogonal just means they meet at a 90 degree angle. Right? Um, that trust me, this will become important later in the course. All right now, if you took the dot product of two vectors and you didn't get zero, all that means is that the two vectors are not orthogonal. All right, let's wrap up with just a couple closing notes. Some of these I've already mentioned. Uh, the first note is when you dot, take the dot product of two vectors, you get a scalar. Your answer is a scalar, not a vector. So your answer will not have I's or J's in it or be written in component form. Second thing, U and V are going to be perpendicular to one another or orthogonal. It's the same, same word, it means meets at a 90 degree angle. If and only if the dot product is zero. I don't know if you've seen this math notation before, but if you haven't, you just learned something new. Whenever you write IFF, -F, that's a math phrase that means if and only if. So these guys are perpendicular. If and only if the dot product is zero. So if you wanted to know if two vectors were orthogonal, you would take the dot product and just see if you get zero. And lastly, What's up with this, this alternate definition? What could he be used for? Well, if you think about it, and we'll do an example of this coming up, um, this new formula, that can actually tell us the angle, the, the theta, so to speak, between these two vectors. Because if you think about it, if you know u and you know v, then you can find the dot product. You'll obviously be able to find the magnitude of u and v yourself. And you can solve this, you can wiggle it around and use a little algebra to determine the angle theta between the two vectors. So if the dot product is zero, if the dot product gives you zero, obviously the magnitudes of the two vectors aren't gonna be zero. So what's the only way cosine can be zero? It's if theta was 90 degrees, in which case u and v would be orthogonal to one another. So that, that reveals that fact that we just said there. But even if it's not orthogonal, you can take an arc cosine somewhere along the way and it'll tell you the exact angle even if it's not 90 degrees. It can tell you that they're 53.8 degrees apart or something like that. So if that doesn't make totally good sense, no big deal. Just go into our next video and we'll actually work out some examples of some of these facts.